it's we call it the Robin Hood strategy. So there's a story about Robin Hood. For those who don't know, Robin Hood is where he would take money from the rich and give it back to the poor. And most of those clients are CEOs of companies. They are women executives. They are they see technology professionals in the United States because in India they can't afford me. Yeah. So it's the same analogy here. So I'm not really taking money from the rich. I'm just giving them a premium service that they want, right? And they don't have to be super wealthy either. Like it's anyone above seventy-five thousand dollars a year can afford a coach, right? Yeah. And then, and then I use those funds to make free videos. Cause I spend a lot of money on my YouTube channel. Right? I spend like ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year just to make those videos. Right? It cost me my. That's my personal money, right? But now somebody, let's say in India, who lives in the slums or something, but has access to the internet, they can watch all my videos for free and get the tips. And that's my mission. Hello everyone, this is Hermes. Welcome to the knowledge sharing platform of Freedom Freak. Today we have a special guest who is a founder of Master Talk and who has a more than 30k followers in the YouTube who has transformed many lives by coaching them how to overcome fear of speaking in public. Let's welcome Mr. Brendan Kumarasamy. Hi Brendan. Hey Hermes. To Freedom Freak. Good to be here. Could you please introduce yourself to our audience? Where are you from? What's your education qualification? And most important, what's your business model? Yeah, absolutely, Hermas. Thanks for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. So yeah, my, my backstory is I grew up in a city called Montreal in Canada, which is where I'm from. It's where I'm based. I've lived there most of my life. And I still live there. And that's my background. My educational background, funny enough, was accounting. So when I went to college, I studied accounting, which has nothing to do with what I do today. Because I thought I was going to be a numbers guy. But then when I got to college, Hermas, I started doing these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports, but for nerds. So while other guys my age were playing cricket or rugby or football or basketball, I wasn't one of those guys. I did presentations competitively. And that's how I learned how to communicate. But then as I got older, I started coaching all of the other students on how to speak and I accidentally got really talented at communication coaching. So then I started a YouTube channel called Master Talk because I realized a lot of people in the world, they can't really afford a communication coach. They don't only have access to this information. So I started making videos. And then after that, I was able to start coaching a lot of CEOs and high level executives on how to speak. And I built a coaching practice in the back end. Okay, cool. Well, how did you realize that you can coach other people? How did you realize that you can make that as a business? Like, you know, some people, even though they are expert in communication, like many people, they are good at sales, some are good at public speaking, but they are hesitant to start, the, start that as a business. So how did you realize that you can start that as a full-time business? Yeah, for sure, Hermas. And to be honest, it was an accident. So what happened was from the ages of 19 to 22, I'd probably coach 60 people on communication, but I never made $1 from it. I just loved it. I was just coaching people. I wanted them to win the competitions to get the okay. dream job because I landed a great job at IBM in consulting. Okay. So I, I wasn't thinking this was going to be a business. Master Talk really started as a hobby. It was just a joke. I was just in my mother's basement. And I was making videos for fun. And those old videos are still up there. So what happened? How did it turn into a business? Nine months into Master Talk from us, I went to Columbus, Ohio, in the United States to meet Lewis Howe. So Lewis is the host of the School of Greatness podcast, which is like a, a top 100 podcast in the world. And he does a live event every year. And I went there because I wanted to meet him. And I ended up meeting my business partner, who's today my business partner, Vamsi Palimetla. He was born in Andhra Pradesh in India. And I met him there. And he is the one who looked at me and said, you know, you could charge executives thousands of dollars to work with you, Brendan, right? And I laughed at him. I was like, come on, man, I'm 23 years old. No one's going to pay me money. And he said, yeah, why don't you coach my clients? They're in the Desi community in India. A lot of them, they come to the United States on an H-1B visa, but they're really bad at speaking. So in technology roles, so they can't get promoted. If you help them, they'll pay you money so that they can get promoted. And he gave me my first 10 clients. That's when I knew it was a business. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Well, you started as a content then turned into public speaking coach. That's great. Are you still continuing that a content skills in anywhere or just uh, totally left it out? Uh, almost, almost. So almost. I don't practice as an accountant anymore, but that degree became very useful in business because I run my own numbers. 
Um, right, I'm my own bookkeeper. My I have a CPA who does my taxes though, but other than that, like I know my books, I manage my numbers really well, and that's why we did really well. So I love, I love, I'm glad I had that accounting background. Oh, that's great. When people generally divide into group like introvert and extrovert, and mostly like myself in younger age, at least nowadays I communicate with people like quite often. Like in my early college days and school days and all, like I was a shy guy, I was like an introvert. So for those kind of people, it's really hard to even communicate with their friends and colleagues. So, but for them, communicating in front of the mass crowd is the carriest thing. So what are the tips would you give them? Like what, what will be your five most important tips for them to overcome their fear of public speaking? For sure, Herma, it's a great question. So here, here's the way I think about it, which applies whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. It's just the introvert's going to be a little bit different of an ankle, which is communication is like juggling 18 balls at the same time. One of those balls is body language. One of those balls is facial expressions. One of those balls is smiling, storytelling. And it can get really confusing really fast. You're like, oh my God, there's so many different things. So for me, the question has always been, what are the three easiest balls to juggle? Because if we juggle those three balls first, life becomes really easy. We'll gain that confidence that we're looking for. So let's start with ball number one. And then if you want me to talk about the other two, I'm more than happy to. So ball number one is the random word exercise. Pick a random word, like light bulb, like phone, like home, like door, and create random presentations out of thin air. And this solves two pieces. The first one is it helps you deal with uncertainty. Life is filled with it, Hermas, right? When you're meeting somebody new at an event, you have no idea how that conversation is going to go. And the second piece is if you can make sense out of nonsense, you could make sense out of anything. So if you could talk about avocados or curry or pistachios or home for 30 seconds, you could talk about anything for 30 seconds. So for somebody who's more introverted, I would practice the random word exercise three to five times a day, but you don't even need to do it with an audience. Do it alone in your basement with nobody watching, you'll get better over time. So the other two is called the question drill and the video message. So the question drill just means we get asked questions all the time in our life, at school, at work, at a hospital, because I know you're working as a nurse, right? So we're all getting asked questions all the time on a podcast, but most of us are reactive to those questions. We're not proactive. Meaning, a few years ago, when I started guesting on podcasts, I wasn't that good. I was really bad, actually. I remember some guy asked me, hey, Brenda, where does the fear of communication come from? And I was like, uh, where does the fear of communication come from? London, New York, <laughs> Los Angeles? I didn't know the answer. So I was really bad. So every single day, Hermas, for five minutes, five minutes, I answered one question that I thought somebody would ask me about my expertise on communication. So day one was how do you overcome your fear of communication? Day two was how do you communicate better as an introvert and extrovert? Day three was how do we use body language as a tool to make ourselves better? But I did that every day. But if you do that for a year, you'll have answered 365 questions about your industry. You'll be bulletproof. And that's number two. And then finally, number three is video messages. Make a list of three to five people you love the most in your life, a friend, a family member, a client, and send them a 20 second video message to just say, hey, I really appreciate having you in my life. Thanks for being there. I love the impact that you're creating. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. And the only rule to the video message from us is you're not allowed to retake the video. You have to just send whatever you have. Those are my easy threes. Mm -hmm. So what is the main reason for not retaking the videos? Like mostly nowadays I've been recording the videos. Like most of the time when I record videos, I keep redoing it until I get satisfied like I did perfect. So what is the reason for not redoing it? Very good question, Hermas. <laughs> so you is what I would define as an, as an expert. And even if you don't think of yourself as an expert, in my eyes, you are one. Why is that? Because most people in the world never open the camera one time uh yeah never open the camera one time so, so for somebody like you as a content creator you've already done a few dozen interviews and you want to make it perfect 
it makes sense for you to redo the video. I redo the videos too. But the person listening to this podcast doesn't even want to post once on YouTube. So for them, the advice is don't post on social media. But when you send that video mem- video message to your dad or to your family member, you're not allowed to retake it. Because if you are allowed, you'll never do it. That's really the key. So that's what I'll push. But after you do 100, the first 100, you're not allowed to retake. But after you do 100, retake it as many times as you want. Uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. And nowadays, many people want to become a YouTuber, like not just to get the popularity, but like, sharing their ideology and teaching the stuff they wish they had taught someone in their early life. For example, myself, when I come to the UK, I started to learn more about the personal finance. So I, I thought when I tried to teach other people, only then I realized that I suck at communicating skills. Because yeah, <laughs> earlier, I thought that learning more about the personal finance that's the most important thing for teaching others about the finance. So I was reading a lot of books and listening to a lot of podcasts. I increased my, I consumed a lot of information in the personal finance. But when I tried to teach, to my surprise, my biggest hurdle was speaking in front of the camera. So what is the difference between speaking in front of the camera and speaking in front of the mass crowd? Right. So there's, there's a great question, Herma. So there's two ways of approaching this. Let's just start with the camera, which is simply this. Volume solves for most of your problems on camera, which means the video messages, just do that 100 times. Don't even think about how do I do this better. Oh, you need to have this lighting. You need to have that. I started my YouTube channel, Herma, in my mother's basement with a phone, and mm-hmm. I never even edited a single video for the first year. I would just sit there. I would write out the video. And I would say, uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to Master Talk. My name is Brent. It's shit. It's so bad. Like, you can go watch my first videos. They're still there. That's me, my first year. But what happened week after week, I got better and better and better. So when I got really good, then I had my friend do my production. And now the videos look really fancy now. But at that time, I had the skills to be on camera so I could do really, really well. That's really what I want people to remember. But volume solves everything. The other piece that's that I love about camera is when you get good at it, all you have to do is get the video right one time and you could share it forever. So start imagining the impact that you can create. Like what's nice about now that I'm four years into content creation, it's so nice because when somebody asks me a question, I don't need to waste my time answering it because there's like too many DMs now. Now all I have to do is just send them the video and then they just watch it and it solves their problem. It saves me a lot of time, right? So yeah. that's really the key that I, that I want people to keep in mind. And then a, another exercise for those of you who don't really know what to present, what I always like to do is I like to go on stories on Instagram because those videos get deleted in 24 hours anyway. Mm. And I call this exercise the thought experiment. So every day when you have a thought, it could be a quote you saw on TikTok, it could be a, a lesson you learned, just open your camera. I would sit on my mattress and I would just go, hey guys, I had this thought. So uh, I, I think if you surround yourself with the best people, you'll get the best results. And in my life, blah, blah, blah. And I do that for 60 seconds. I go, okay, bye. And I did that the next day and the next day and the next day. And that allows you to practice every day as well. So that's a couple of tricks. And now you've been coaching many people in this field. Uh, do you do one-to-one coaching or like the general people, you put them in a class together or how do you do the coaching? Yeah, for sure, Hermas. So, so a couple of points since you asked me about business model. One thing that I found really interesting in my career that I think you'll find interesting too is the person who watches my YouTube videos is very different than the person who is my client. Because mm-hmm. my clients are like a really – like I don't work with a lot of people. We're talking 100 people a year, maybe mm-hmm. 200. And I can probably go up to 300, but that's it. But there, to your point, there's 30,000 people following me. So for me, it's more about saying 1% of my community becomes a client, not more than that. And the other 99%, they get free resources. They get free tips on this podcast. Mm-hmm. They learn a lot. So what happened? What happened was the person who watches 100 of my videos, which is great, by the way, they, they can watch a lot of my videos because they have a lot of time. Students in college, somebody who's just getting started in their work, somebody who just got laid off, let's say they want to get their next job. Perfect. They'll watch all the videos, they'll learn, and they don't have a lot of money. But the person who signs up as a client, 
they'll watch one or two of my videos max and they'll go i don't have time to watch these videos i'm gonna hire this guy directly and he's just gonna train me and i'm gonna pay a lot more money for that so what that ended up becoming is a small group program so 10 to 15 executives in a group maybe 20 but a small group that i coach in groups and then they have one-on-one calls with me and most of those clients are ceos of companies they are women executives they are they see technology professionals in the united states because in india they can't afford me so it's more like they have to be they're indian born but they live in the u.s so they have a u.s salary so they're making one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand dollars U.S., and they'll pay me a few thousand to work with me. Mm-hmm. Those have been my three main clients. Okay, so people who has a lot of time, those people just watch a lot of videos. But those people who have a lot of money but less time, they pay more. <laughs> yeah, Re- right. actually, recently I was reading a book about mastering gym or something. Actually, he say the same technique. Ninety nine percent of the people can't like can't afford the things what remaining one percentage of the people do so if you are trying to charge in the same way how you charge the 99 percentage of the people you're never going to get anywhere <laughs> correct that's the key it's it's we call it the robin hood strategy so there's a story about robin hood for those who don't know robin hood it is where he would take money from the rich and give it back to the poor yeah. so it's the same analogy here so i'm not really taking money from the rich i'm just giving them a premium service that they want that they're willing to pay for, right? And they don't have to be super wealthy either. Like it's anyone above $75,000 a year can afford a coach, right? And then and then I use those funds to make free videos. Because I spend a lot of money on my YouTube channel, right? I spend like ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year just to make those videos, right? Cost mm-hmm. me my that's my personal money. Right. Mm-hmm. But now somebody, let's say in India, who lives in the slums or something, but has access to the internet, they can watch all my videos for free and get the tips that yeah. people pay thousands of dollars to, to work with me for. And that's yeah. my mission, right? Mm-hmm. That's my mission. So yeah, works. that's true. Actually, the difference in the currency purchasing power, that matters a lot. Like, for example, in India, if I had like $1,000, that's a huge purchasing power in India. But at the same time, they are paying for with that amount of money to you. It's like their month's salary or their two yeah. months' salary, right? Yeah. <laughs> True. But when you said you do the coaching, do you do it in face-to-face or online coaching? Yeah, 95% of my coaching for us is online. And okay. the reason why people are willing to pay a lot of money for it anyways is because most of their presentations are online now anyways, <laughs> yeah. right? Because you're doing Zoom calls all the time. Only 5% of my coaching is in person. This is really my top clients. The people spend a lot of money on me. Then mm-hmm. we do one live event every year and they come to Florida and then I, I give them in-person coaching. But other than that live event, yeah, most of them is going to be it. online. Okay. Most of my clients will never meet me in person unless mm-hmm. I'm in their city. Then I'll say, hey, I'm in the city. Every, all my clients who live in New York, I'm doing a dinner. All of you come and then they'll come to the dinner and I'll meet them all in person for the first time. Like in case if people are watching this video, if they want to contact you, what are the best way to contact you? Like is uh instagram or what's the best way to contact you we can put that in the description <laughs> absolutely Herma. so there, there's two ways the first one is the youtube channel just go to master talk in one word you'll have access to hundreds of free videos for free and the second way to keep in touch is come to one of my free communication workshops so i do a free one over zoom every two weeks it's a 90 minute training and i facilitate it so i'm coaching people on the call for free there's eight year olds who come to this call there's ceos of really big companies who come to this call it's a party that everyone is invited to so if you want to come to that training all you have to do is go to the website rockstar communicator dot com if you type rockstar communicator dot com you can just register for the next training and attend that over zoom okay that's a free completely free training for okay uh it's a 19 it's training is it like how many people will be in the crowd like will they be able to ask you any personal doubts in that section that's correct so of course now because it's free there's a lot of people who attend this call right last time i think i had 50 or 60 people the call before that had like 85 90 people but what happens is there's a Q&A period at the end where I, I just bullet through and I always get to all the questions I'll stay over like five minutes to ask and it's interactive so I'll pull people from the crowd and we have them do extra so it's really fun and it's free you're right so there's no okay. there's no risk you just jump and you enjoy thank you so much 
Brenton, it was nice talking to you. I hope our viewers get a lot of information from this. And, and definitely, I recommend the Master Talk to anyone who wants to improve their communication skills. Thank you so much, Brenton. Thank you. Thanks, Hermas. Thanks for having okay. me on the show and, and hope to see everyone at the next training or the channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.